Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about the Spearman Correlation Coefficient Matrix and how you can use this to come up with a diversified portfolio. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. We do have several different tiers, including a free one. Links in the description below. And of course, you'll find charts like the one we'll talk about in this video. Now, the Spearman correlation coefficient should not be confused with the Pearson correlation coefficient matrix, which is also a video we've previously made. So if you were to look through the history of this channel, we've actually made a video on the Pearson correlation coefficient matrix before. But the difference, the main difference, is the Pearson correlation coefficient is more so used to assess a linear correlation between two sets of data, whereas the Spearman correlation coefficient better assesses how they are um, in terms of being described or if they can be described or how well they can be described via a monotonic function. So there are, of course, those are the main differences being between a Pearson correlation coefficient and the Spearman. So in this video, we're going to be talking specifically about the Spearman correlation coefficient. And we're looking at least initially um, over a 365 day time period. And what this chart shows is we have total market cap in the first column and then the first row and then Bitcoin and then Ethereum and then Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Alphabet, Meta, DXY, you know, the U.S. dollar currency index, gold, silver, platinum, palladium, nickel and copper. So you sort of have a nice basket of different assets that we can easily compare to. And the reason we do this is because, you know, as an investor, and this is not financial advice, of course, but as an investor, you don't really want to put all your eggs in one basket because you're always going to have to face the idiosyncratic risk of every individual asset class. So, for instance, if you were to have 90% of your net worth in a single asset or asset class, what happens if that asset class sees a major drawdown, right? It's, it's not very ideal for your total net worth to experience a drawdown commensurate with the drawdown that you might have seen in an individual asset class. So like, especially with crypto, you know, we know, we've talked about how crypto can drop a lot, especially the altcoin market can drop a lot in bear markets. And there are plenty of altcoins, no shortage of them, in fact, that have already dropped 90% over the last 14 or 15 months. So you need to understand that, you know, some level of diversification can help protect you as an investor. Now, one thing to look at here, when you sort of just isolate some of the cryptocurrencies, right, you have total market cap, Bitcoin and Ethereum. But notice that, and of course, the diagonal is just going to be one all the way across because you're just comparing one asset to itself, right? So total market cap compared to total market cap, of course, the correlation is going to be one. Bitcoin compared to Bitcoin, one. Ethereum compared to Ethereum, one. And that's why you'll see the diagonal is just ones is because you're just comparing that asset to itself but what you'll notice is that the total market cap is highly correlated to bitcoin well, makes sense because bitcoin of course is a large component of the total market cap but additionally bitcoin is fairly highly correlated to ethereum the spearman correlation coefficient over the course of a 365 day time window is actually coming in at around 0.91 Okay, so this is this is a fairly high you know, a fairly high correlation coefficient. I mean, it's not a perfect monotonic relationship, but it is still relatively high. And so, what this essentially shows, of course, is that you know by being quote unquote diversified into Bitcoin and Ethereum, you're still experiencing very similar types of drawdowns, very similar types of moves to the upside. And you know, Bitcoin from the all time high has dropped around 77% at this point, uh, whereas Ethereum, I think, has dropped a little bit more. Um, it dropped over 80%, I believe, back in June of 2022. But at the at the end of the day, despite the fact that they've had various drawdowns, the, the movements, you know, in terms of positive movement, negative movement, they haven't really been that dissimilar. And so, you know, diversifying your portfolio by just only having a basket of cryptocurrencies isn't really a strong level of diversification. Now, it might be diversifying within crypto, but it's not really a, a strong measure of having a diversified portfolio because the crypto market is a largely highly correlated with itself. I mean, especially if any individual asset, like an altcoin is likely going to be 
fairly highly correlated to a lot of other altcoins. This is not always the case, but it's generally generally what you'll see. But what you'll also notice is that when you go out of the cryptocurrency asset class and you compare, say, the correlation coefficient between, say, Bitcoin and Apple, it drops down to around 0.64. And if you compare it between, say, Bitcoin and Amazon, it's 0.77, Bitcoin and Netflix, 0.19, Bitcoin and Alphabet, 0.85, and then Bitcoin and Meta, 0.92. So the correlation with, with Meta is actually quite high. But what you'll see, and, and maybe that's because of their, um, you know, their, their jump into the cryptoverse, so to speak, or maybe into the metaverse, um, you know, uh, not too long ago. But by having exposure to, you know, to crypto and equities, it will show you various types of drawdown, right? Like you're not you're not as likely going to see that same type of drawdown. Or if, if one asset class is moving down, it doesn't necessarily mean the other asset class is moving down. Think back to to um, October when you know in October the S and P 500 was in fact putting in a new low. So right, if we take a look at at the S and P back in October, the S and P was putting in a new low, but but Bitcoin was not, not, not in October, right? It, it, it actually avoided a new low in October. Um, but then Bitcoin put in a new low in November. Why? Well, there was this idiosyncratic risk of the crypto asset class when we, you know, when the Federal Reserve raised interest rates a lot and you ended up seeing the fallout of FTX. Now, the fallout of FTX is not going to affect other companies. You know, it's not going to affect Apple in the same way it's going to affect Bitcoin or Ethereum or or the altcoin market. So again, a diversification outside is useful so that you're not exposing yourself to all the same risk, right? It's, it's a good way to sort of spread out your risk amongst various asset classes. Now, of course, in 2022, for the most part, most risk, most, most risk assets just simply went down, right? I mean, it's not like um, it's not like you would have avoided a ton of losses had you just put all your money in risk assets. And this is what we said in 2022, right? Like cash is king. I mean, it's not you know there's really nowhere great to hide, um, and, and and cash was a very valuable place uh, to to be. And again, I still think cash is a, is a is a good place to sort of hedge your bets. But it shows you again that the idiosyncratic risk. You can sort of minimize that for any individual asset by being diversified across other assets. Um, and then if you look at, say, like the correlation between Bitcoin and some of the precious metals, you'll see it, it, it's actually a bit lower, right? A 0.67 with gold, 0.45 with silver, 0.14 with platinum, 0.60 with palladium, 0.36 with nickel, and 0.69 with copper. So again, it, it shows there is some correlation there, right? Some positive correlation, but it, it's not as highly correlated. Um, and, and, you know, things like platinum is not really correlated much at all. It's more or less right around zero. What you'll really notice, though, is what is red, right? It's the dollar. And, and when the dollar, as we know over the last year, right, when the dollar is going up, risk assets are generally going down. And when the dollar is going down, risk assets are generally going up. Now, precious metals aren't really considered risk assets, but they did go down. Uh, last year. And one of the things we said many, many times, especially with gold and silver, is that as long as the dollar continues to rally, you're likely going to see gold and silver within sort of a holding pattern. Uh, but at some point when the dollar sees a massive move to the downside, you actually might see the things like, you know, commodities like gold and silver actually actually put in um, some some better returns. But this is one way to look at the market and to sort of assess, you know, where where is the market and, and how, how some level of diversification can actually be quite good. And now I don't really talk much about equities on at least the public channel. I do talk a bit more about it on, on the premium side. Um, you know, Meta is one of these, and maybe Meta would actually be worthwhile to, to, to maybe take a look at right now just because it is it has actually been somewhat highly correlated to, to the crypto market. And um, at least on the public side, I was, I was very, or sorry, on the, on the premium side, I was actually very vocal about uh, Meta being a very good buy below $100. And, um, but now it's sort of seen a, a, a 2x move here. And I'm not yet sure. I, you know, I'm sort of falling into the camp that, that this rally is getting somewhat spent. I'm not saying it can't go higher, but in, in general, I, I believe Meta is already talking about you know, further cuts and whatnot coming up. Um, 
and you know to the to the to the labor to the their their workforce i'm not really sure if that's you know, if, that, if that rumor has been substantiated or not but I, I still while i actually am bullish on meta long term um i do imagine that we're going to see some some fade of this rally in the coming months and it's sort of like a long drawn out um maybe call it like a reaccumulation phase before going into another into another uh, bull market is is my general assessment and, and you can see this pattern is, is sort of it's popping up on meta um, and, and one of the reasons I, I thought meta was at least somewhat worthwhile down there was you know it was a very similar move right like a 77 percent move to the downside Netflix same thing right I mean it was it was basically the same same playbook right I mean you have like a 77 percent move to the downside everyone hates it and, and where did it rally back up to, right? I mean, you know, essentially the same place that Meta is, just sort of back testing this trend line that it, it, it once held as support. So when you look at, at these correlation, with the Spearman correlation coefficient matrix, it's not to just say that you should go YOLO in to, you know, to all these other projects. I mean, like some of these are, are could very well be coming up on some major resistance levels that, that could take quite some time to actually break through in a sustained way, but it does show you that over the long haul, having a diversified portfolio can actually be quite quite useful, right? And and you know coincidentally, um, in the same way that Netflix saw a, a, a sizable rally at a 77 percent drawdown to the downside, um, Meta saw a sizable rally after a 77 percent drawdown to the downside. Bitcoin also saw. And at least so far has seen a nice rally after a 77% move to the downside. Now, all of these don't necessarily mean anything, as we've as we've said before. I mean, you know, markets can can drop 77% and 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 still not necessarily be done. I mean, you can see the Nasdaq back in in 2001 dropped 77%, had a nice rally, and then ultimately resolved to the downside. But the point is, is you know, I, I do think 2023 is going to present several opportunities for accumulation. It already has. It probably will continue to present opportunities for accumulation for a lot of different assets throughout a majority of this year. And, um, and you know, figuring out how to be diversified by looking at correlations between various assets, I, I think, is, is useful. And you can also look at this over various time frames as well. Like if you wanted to look at it over a shorter time frame, like say like a 60-day time frame, you can see it's actually... Uh, quite a bit different. Like the the correlation between Bitcoin and a lot of the precious metals, at least you know silver, platinum, palladium, and nickel have has actually been negative recently. Whereas with gold and copper, it's actually been positive. We actually talked about copper not too long ago, um, and, and one of the reasons we spoke about copper is is actually because it it it, it tends to lead CPI. Um, so if you actually take a look at at at, at copper just sort of like as a as an anecdote here it's been rallying for a little bit you know i mean since november copper has started to rally some and and the reason why that's notable is if you take the look at at you know um cpi you'll see that it's it's actually been a fairly close relationship right like when copper is is moving up you'll see inflation moving higher when when copper is moving down inflation's going down it tends to lead it you know, copper sort of made this move first, and then in, and then and then inflation year over year followed. Same thing, um, same thing uh, over here, right? Like copper started to come down, and then inflation started to come down. Here, copper started to go up, and then inflation started to go up, and now inflation, copper started to come down in February, and then inflation started to come down. But now copper is starting to go back up some, and so it's starting to raise the question: Well, is inflation going to come down as quickly as a lot of people are hoping it is or are we starting to see the you know sort of like the the reacceleration in some sectors like in some commodities that might make inflation stickier than what people are ideally hoping for um, but again i mean you know these these sorts of things can show you how how you know being diversified amongst various asset classes can sort of help mitigate some of the downside in your overall portfolio, right? I mean, like if, if some catastrophic thing happened in crypto, it's not necessarily going to affect, you know, maybe your allocation in Apple or your allocation in silver 
or if something drastic happened that affected the precious metal market, it's not necessarily going to affect your allocation in Bitcoin or your allocation in Ethereum or Netflix or Apple or Alphabet. So again, diversification, I think, is good. Um, it's not always the most uh, uh, flashy thing to talk about, but it is, I, I think, a, worth, a worthwhile thing to consider for serious investors looking to sort of minimize minimize some of the risk and 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 try to grow their portfolio in in a you know maybe a more sound way over a relatively long period of time and the other thing i wanted to take a look at is if you actually look at how the spearman correlation coefficient um, has has evolved this is a 60-day time frame as a function of time it's actually been getting higher and higher when looking at the correlation between Bitcoin and Ethereum. If you look at this on say like a 365 day time frame, you'll see that you know it, it came down here in February 2017 and pretty big move back over here in February of 2022. But for the most part, they've been very, very correlated and, and that hasn't really changed, okay? So again, I think we'll wrap it up there. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you're not. We also again do have Into the Cryptoverse Premium. We have tons of charts on here, not only for crypto, but also for equities. And, and for the macroverse as well, make sure you check it out. Several, several different tiers available, of course. You can cancel at any time. Um, we'll wrap it up there. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.